Uh, if I explain the nutrition experiment, the aim of the experiment was to study the, um, the influence of loving in, um, in food choice. So you can see, like, they make this uh, kind of bubble between the mandibles. And uh, after they bring this bubble to the nest and they share it with workers and larvae. So first what we did it was like to have like a lot of colonies with larvae and without larvae and give them choices between different food sources. And when the larvae were present, the foragers were going for um, proteins, and when the larvae were not there, they were going for sugar. But the thing was very interesting. If we were putting larvae with the foragers, the ants were like uh, surviving better. In fact, larvae can digest protein, but the adults can't. And the larvae is exactly the opposite. They're more like a digestive bag. <laughs> so it's like the larvae was the stomach for the ants. There was two big surprises. First, that the ants were able to kind of listen to the larvae <laughs> because they would, they would choose the food as a function of the larvae presence or not. And the second big um discovery was like the uh, toxic effect of protein and the fact that larvae could save the colony from this toxic effect. So the diamond ship bridge experiment, it's a very famous one in ants. When you give a choice to the ants, uh, if you give them a choice between two paths or completely similar, they would always choose one path because they lay pheromone on, on the way to the food source and on their way back. So the question we were asking in doing this experiment is what happens if there's traffic jam? If the density is so high that you can't really take one branch. So we just decrease the width of each branch from like one centimeter to 1.5 millimeter. Mm -hmm. And what we observe that if you decrease the width of the branch and start to take the second branch. So we use the two branches at the same time. To avoid the traffic jam, if an ant comes at the fork between the two branches, if she wants to choose one branch and she encounter another ant in front of her, she would collide with it and would change direction and take the second branch. So in fact, there were no traffic jams. <laughs> that was a surprise because we really like 1.5 millimeter is really, really narrow. And they managed to, by using the two branches at the same time and with this pushing phenomena at the entrance of the bridge, they really avoid the traffic jam. It's why we had this idea for the second experiment. It's, it was to say, okay, but if you don't have a choice now, you have just one path, what are you going to do? So, in fact, what we did was like to give a very wide bridge and count the number of ants per minute. And after all, we give them not a wide bridge, but a very narrow one, and we count the number of ants per minute too. And the surprise was it was exactly the same. What they were doing was to temporarily organize um, the flow. In fact, they would uh, desynchronize the travel on the bridge. So they would have a group of ants going to the food source, and one second later, a group of ants coming back to the nest. And they would never really meet. So they would avoid collision. Collision is the thing or like delay the ants, in fact. Where each time they collide, they lose like around like an average one second. Uh, I did the traffic experiment with uh, different species already. And so we're going to continue to try that because different species de use different solutions. And for nutrition, it's just the beginning because there's really never been studied nutrition in it, so we have a lot, lot of experiments in, in projects. Because we, f we think that this dependence between ants and larvae, it's as perhaps mm, had a role in evolution, in the evolution of sociality.